Hey, I'm Alex. I'm a co-founder here at Gretel, and today I'm going to walk through using the Gretel CLI and APIs to generate synthetic data. Let's jump on in. First thing you'll want to do is to go ahead and log into the Gretel console. We'll use this to generate an API key, which we will connect to the CLI so it knows how to interface with our service. Next step is to go ahead and install the Gretel CLI. Simple pip command. Requires Python 3 or greater. Set up. From there, you want to go ahead and make sure it's set up correctly. Just type in Gretel. I'll to um, show you an overview of the different commands that you can execute. Running Gretel configure will allow us to go ahead and set up the defaults. Go ahead and accept the defaults. We're going to be training our model in the cloud. You also have the option of training a model locally where your data never leaves your environment if you wish. Um, we'll go ahead and grab our API key and paste that in here. So we are good to go. From there, let's go ahead and jump over to the docs and we'll follow on with the docs in the example for creating synthetic data. Go on CLI tutorials, create synthetic data. From here, the first thing we'll do is create a project. So we're going to create a default project, which is the landing place for our models and the data we create uh, within the, the Gretel SaaS service. Take a look at this command here, Gretel projects create. We're giving a name name, uh, display name called healthcare, which is a uh, meant to just kind of give us a description for the type of data set we're working on. We're also setting that as the default, so you don't have to specify that in the uh, next commands we run. It's created correctly. Next thing we're going to do, um, you can actually just call Gretel directly on the uh, um, this file that's located in the cloud, but I wanted to pull it down and take a look and, and take a look at the data before I start training. So we'll use wget. We'll pull down this example EHR data that we're going to create a synthetic version of. I'm going to download that from S3. Let's take a look. What we see here are about 20 different columns of data. We've got nice mixed integer, categorical, free text, numeric data. Um, so it's a good challenge for, uh, for any synthetic data system. And our challenge here is to train a neural network essentially on this text. Um, and this, essentially, we're training the language model that learns to recreate this text. And we look at whether it's capable of learning the insights and the correlations that exist in the input data and recreating that into a new artificial synthetic data set. Okay, so we've got that downloaded. The next step here is we are going to go ahead and train a synthetic model on our data set. Let's take a look at this command. So we can go ahead and paste this in. What we're running here are Gretel models create. So essentially, we're telling it to train a new model within our project. Um, we're running it in the cloud. We're using a configuration here. We're specifying a configuration set. Um, you can use the default set. We're using one here called high field count, which works well for this data set as it had about 20 fields in it. Um, the input data is hospital EHR data. The output um, is to a local file system. And then we are storing the model ID to a file that we can use subsequently for calls to generate records. Um, we mentioned here that uh, the high field count, uh, count config is the one that we were going with. You can browse different configurations or even make your own here. So options would be to um, view any one of these configurations or make small changes to it, fine tune them, or create your own. One of the popular ones we see often with our customers is training with differential privacy. So here you can see an example of a YAML config, turning on differential privacy and specifying the default parameters that we used to and start training. From here, we're ready to start training. So let's go ahead and kick this off. The model. It's uploading the data source that we have to our project in Gretel. It's creating the project, queuing model creation. So what it's doing now is looking for a worker, uh, which will pick up this project. Um, a worker is a GPU-enabled box that will essentially start training our neural network for us um, within the Gretel cloud. Model is completed training. Um, it went for the full 100 epochs without using early stopping, so it was continually improving on the validation set. You can see here a quick look at it shows that the accuracy is quite good, um, 0 0.8 on accuracy and validation loss. Typically, anything under one, um, you've got a pretty solid model. So we could expect this to perform pretty well. The next step here is going to start generating records. Um, so here we see in each different batch, um, the number of records here, 365 generated in the first batch, um, five failed validation. So we train a set of expert validators that look at the train 
student data, um, and they look to make sure that anything created by the neural network kind of matches the, uh, the semantics and types of data that we saw in the, uh, the training data. If it fails, it fails the record, which really gives you high confidence um, in the uh, synthetic data that's been created. So here it completed the uh, 5,000 records we asked it to create um, and went ahead and generated a report. We'll go ahead and take a look at that report now and try to get an idea of how good of a job or how synthetic is my synthetic data. And open up the report. Here we can see our model We've got an excellent quality score. So really what this report allows us to do is deep dive on the data, um, see how many of the original training lines were duplicated, for example, get some idea around um, privacy, um, as well as the insights and distribution of the original data. What I like to look for, um, I like to typically start with uh, looking at correlations in the data, and here we can see that our um, neural network appeared to have learned and recreated the correlations in the original data set very well. Um, if this is something you're not seeing enough of, I would uh, recommend adding uh, additional records, which helps quite a bit. Sometimes in increasing the complexity of the neural network will help as well. Second graph I really like to look at is the, uh, the PCA. Uh, what PCA does is it compresses really highly dimensional data, uh, e.g. the 20 different columns we have, um, into a two-dimensional plane. And what I like to do is really just kind of compare the shape of the output sets here um, and make sure that they're similar, right? So this shows that we didn't overfit and kind of focus on a few. Um, learning a few models, uh, rather we, we like to see kind of a, a uniform distribution across both different data sets. And there you have the ability to dive in on a field by field level and look at the example here, um, available rooms in the hospital or admission deposit. And what we can look at here is the di distributions of elements we're seeing in the synthetic data set um, versus the, uh, the training data set that, um, that it was based upon. So this really gives you a high confidence view before you start to use your model to generate large amounts of data. Um, about the quality of that model and how well it will work for your use case, whether you're doing downstream ML or you're seeking to balance data set or create a pre-production environment. If you're happy with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the data preview we did. So from here, we see our data preview gzip. And what we have here looks like a really nice synthetic data set that's created. We generated 5,000 records. Next, we'll go back to our documentation and we'll generate some more data. So now we'll use the uh, Gretel records generate command. We'll also point it at that model uh, dot JSON, model data dot JSON that we created earlier. So we'll go ahead and look at this command again. This time we're using Gretel records generate. We're passing for the model ID. We're passing it the file that we stole, uh, store the uh, model ID to, running in the cloud, telling generate 5,000 records and to store locally. Here we can see the task being sent to the cloud, cloud worker being identified. And there you have it, we've now generated an additional 5,000 records. Uh, the model can generate an unlimited amount of data. Uh, for next steps going through this tutorial, I would suggest fine-tuning the uh, configuration that we used earlier to see how you can get the maximum synthetic data quality score um, for your use case.